Come on! I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm awake! Nova, how long have I been out? Several months, Captain Spatula. Several peaceful months. Well, that's not right. What could have caused me to fall into such a disillusioned slumber such as this? Why don't you check your logs? I'm just a computer. Uh, good idea, Nova. I'll check out what the last thing I did in space was, and then I'll be able to figure out why I've been sleeping in Elite Dangus for months. Let's see, it all started back in October. The Enclave had just concluded. I had scored my first Thargoid kill out of the Witchhead Nebula. On my way back from the bubble, I started browsing through the news, grabbing headlines about a revolutionary new fertilizer spreading through the market were all over Galnet. This was no Farmer's Digest, though. This was a request for pilots to haul food down to the Old Worlds, to help prevent a famine that was in no way connected to the previous headlines about the Super Fertilizer. Well, there are two things in life I can safely say I excel at. Eating food and pooping it. So this sounded like a case for the spatula. And while I loved flying my golden python around, this kind of job needed a much larger booty. And I'd been squirreling away some void opals to afford me the biggest booty of them all. The mighty beluga. King of the Space Seas. Yes, sir. This big beauty isn't cheap. She barely fits on the landing pad and makes a dolphin look like a torpedo. But this gigantic cetacean has so much legroom in the cockpit, even a centipede could stretch out comfortably. With my cargo packed to the brim with grain and some bio waste just in case, I prepared to set out on my majestic maiden run, bringing food supplies to those in need. Like the ancient Earth legend of McDonald's, who killed the rich and distributed them as affordable hamburgers to feed the poor. I prepare myself to exit the station, but I can't seem to take my eyes off the curves and shininess covering every aspect of the ship. How can something be so big and yet so graceful? Uh, that's what she said. Well, the opposite of that anyway, but uh, let's line this up properly. Right over here. Oops, what's that? Well, that toggles the co-pilot camera. Oopsies. All right, line it up, line it up. Okay, hold on, ease her in, ease her in. Just, just a second here. Gently now. Right through the slot, and smooth and steady, and nope, that's the co-pilot camera. No, no, I'm stuck! Oh no, this is where Belugas die. Boost! Boost, 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 boost! Boost! Oh, free. Freedom. Uh, now where was I? Oh yeah, all I needed to do was haul down some grub to Giso, which sounded oddly familiar. But you know, there used to be these things called Community Goals, which started out pretty cool, but eventually turned into a boring sequence of trade and combat zone events over and over again. But these new interstellar initiatives are supposed to spice things up! So let's see what you got, I.I. Bring it on! I'm gonna regret not lowering my expectations. And this had all started a few weeks prior, with some kind of new Rockford Super Fertilizer hitting the market. Rumor was the demand for this super ship was rising so fast, you could initially buy it and sell it at the same station and get rich. Of course that shit spread like wildfire. Next thing you know, this famine goes down. Crops were failing, bales of hay rolling into space, cows were on strike. Even the cheese industry was reporting that things were just no gouda. People were starving to death in a galaxy where we have limpets that pick up our garbage. And the greatest minds in our galaxy called upon the Pilots' Federation once more to do the dirty work of- Oh god, sorry about that! Oh jeez, I didn't even see him there. Oh my god, oh no no no, not again! Oh jeez, sorry about that, sir, please. Don't hurt me. Ah. Jeez. It's sort of hard not to hit these people in this thing. Both because it's very large, but also because it's very tempting. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah. So this blade starts spreading all over the bubble. Well, it didn't take a genius detective to put two and two together. Rockford was spreading the blight. And soon after the famine was under control, a new initiative was launched. To gather up all that stinky-ass fertilizer and haul that Rockford shit into the sun. Basically a reverse trade goal. Clever. Over the days of constant back and forth, the halls of my once pristine beluga began to smell of Rockford. My food processor spat out chunks of Rockford-flavored food pellets. My shower smelled like Rockford. I brushed my teeth with Rockford. I went to sleep with Rockford. Soon enough, I couldn't tell where Rockford began and I ended. I couldn't help but think. Only a few weeks ago, I had been fighting aliens and helping humanity settle a new frontier. But now here I am hauling shit around. This agricultural dirty work is definitely not main quest material, I'll tell you that. Everyone initially thought that Thargoids would have been responsible for the blight, which, I have to admit, thought of an alien race darting into our territory to take a poop on our food supplies is kind of hilarious, but with the connection to Rockford Fertilizer, it appeared that the blight was one we created ourselves. I had hoped to learn that perhaps Rockford was some kind of sinister anti aegis uh, Thargoid sympathizer, spreading the blight to allow the Thargoids to advance, but 
No, it just turns out it was a bunch of ragtag terrorists upset about Onion Head being banned. Apparently the feds had dusted their illegal crops long ago with a weaponized blight, and this was retribution. Now the focus shifted from trading over to getting some payback on these terrorist bastards. The Scythe of Penem. Okay, well, that sounds like a nice break from boring old trading. It was time to turn this whale into a kraken and outfit her for glorious battle. By the trident of Neptune, may my blowhole be filled with air, and this killer beluga will rise out of the sea and into the infinite sky, a plus-sized warrior for justice, peace, and... Jeez. Uh, stuck. Uh, cage. Get a little bit to the right. Yeah, okay. There we go. Where was I? Justice, peace, and the scraping of krill. Uh, screw that shit. Finally, I was no longer shackled to hauling things back and forth and be able to make some pew pew fun times. Of course, what I forgot was that in the future, in order to legally fight in a war, you need to pick a side. Unfortunately, the only way you can do this is through your comms panel, and during the hauling of the fertilizers, I seem to have gotten some Rockford in the comms panel and was unable to choose. Eh, this happens a lot in the universe. Pilots drop in on a combat zone, can't figure out how to pick a side, and end up hanging out. Watching the carnage unfold, unable to participate lest both sides drop their struggles to gang up on you. There were other commanders having the same issues as well. An entire fight played out and we watched in vain, unable to fight the terrorists due to the faulty paperwork. We were cuckolds in this war, soldiers forced to sit on the sidelines and let NPC destiny unfold. Was it a bug in the ship computers or a nefarious interference from a faction within the pilots' federation? Either way, I wasn't about to sit on my hands watching NPCs get all the fun. I came here to put this beluga into the fire. It was time to try reinstancing. Yes, reinstancing will fix all of your problems. Griefer chasing you? Reinstance. Something doesn't work? Reinstance. Wife leaves you for your therapist? Well, that's why they have clear save. Why else would that option be there? It's in character suicide. Maybe one day, uh, instead of a hidden menu item, they'll just let me fly into the sun to reset my save. Oh, great, it didn't work. What now? Reset my save? Hell no! Uh, actually, I remember this one trick we can try. I can't remember where I saw it, but I, I swear it's gonna work, because I've seen this done by professionals. Alright, let me just get clear here. So, as soon as you instance, you just have to pop open the menu. Alright, just right as you get in, okay? And... Yeah, yeah, now, now just go by some arcs, and uh... No, I'm just kidding, go to solo play. Alright, and the moment of truth. Will my ship comms allow me to pick a side? Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, seriously? Come on. Come on, time's money. Time's arcs. Oh, there we go. Yay! There you have it, folks. Clearly the issues are only limited to open, but work fine in solo. Which makes perfect sense for a community goal meant to bring players together. Uh, but it didn't matter. I didn't need friends to satisfy my bloodlust. With five size one laser beams, my beluga was an instrument of battlefield torture. Size up my prey and give them constant tickles with my lasers. While it may take a while to strip the shield, the entire time I was psychologically destroying the pilot. Think of it, if an elephant were attacking you with a Q-tip, over and over he thrusts his trunk at you, only to swab away a mere skin cell. But then he's back for another, and another, until finally you have no more skin left. And the elephant begins to work on your muscles. Ugh. I don't think I'll ever think of elephants in the same way now. Or Q-tips, for that matter. But after this death to the shields by 1,000 megawatts, there's only one way for the beluga to hunt. By pooping your prey directly in the poop zone. See, everywhere else in the game, the beluga's size works against it. Mail slots, docking, landing, jumping. But here in the combat zone, my size allows me to boop everything. Boop everyone. In just one big gigantic boop. Soon the screams die down and the remaining foes scatter before my aquatic fury. The battle is won. I've seen my enemies scattered before me, heard the lamentations of their women. And now it's time to check how much sweet, sweet terrors and booty I'm sitting on here. Alright. Scrolling down. What's my reward? What? Nothing? Wait, what? How can that be? Oh shit, I was supposed to fight against. Oh, did I just accidentally become a terrorist? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I think I should lay low for a while. Hey, I have an idea. I'll go to sleep for like uh, three months, and then I'll make a video about it to show people that I I, I, I didn't mean to be a beluga terrorist. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that, that's a great idea. Okay, I'll, I'll just have to dock here and buy enough sedative to keep me dreaming for a few months. 
No big deal. We'll just go shit. Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Come on. Just wedge it in. You can do this. All right. Just, just rock it back and forth. Rock. You know. Okay. Up and down and nope. Down, back. Okay. No. That. That. No. That's the co-pilot camera. Just come on. All right. Slam it in there. Whoa. Whoa. What was that? Oh, that felt nice and squishy. Oh, that felt good. What was that? Let me do that again. Oh, yeah. Oh, docking is hard in... Ooh, ooh, what's going on? Uh-oh. Uh, see you next, Dangus.